Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today I want to take you through a 3D printing tutorial on how I orient parts to get the best possible results. Let's get started. I know it's been a little while since I've done a tutorial like this talking about Cura and my settings and how I orient such prints. Now, if you've been following on my channel, you know I print everything from really large swords and props to Iron Man helmets to small handheld things you can just put on your shelf. Bigger swords and stuff are a little trickier to cover, and I do have a few videos talking about those. In this video, I want to talk more about helmets and things that are smaller. So I'm going to take you through Cura and show you how I look at orienting prints like Nova helmets, Iron Man helmets, and a variety of couple other prints that I'm about to throw on my printer. Now, this isn't really going to be a one size fits all. This isn't going to apply to every single print out there, but hopefully by watching me and what I I do, maybe it'll give you some insight on how you can maybe get your prints to orient a little bit differently, print a little bit safer, and what I look out for. So let's get started. Now the first part everyone's constantly asking about is Iron Man helmets. What's the best way to print them? What's the best way to orient them? What are you doing? What do I cut? Now this is an Ender 3 size printer. It's an Ender 3 or Voxel Lab Aquila, 235 by 235 by 3 something, 250. It varies on the height, but as you can see, it doesn't really fit in one shot. But I don't know many people who want to print an Iron Man helmet in just one solid piece. Usually most 3D modelers will break the file up into multiple parts because this is how the helmet's going to be assembled. Now this is the Mark 85 by Akira Yuming. It's a beautiful file and this is his V5 helmet I believe. And it comes in four different parts. And you could print it out in the, you know, the same parts if you wanted to. Fuse the jaw to the lip, fuse the dome to the jaw. That's totally up to you and you can do that in Mesh Mixer. And I do cover that in some other tutorials as well. But this is going to make printing this a lot easier. The faceplate fits just perfectly and something like a faceplate, this always gives people problems because of these sharp little edges here. If I go and slice this, it's probably not going to survive. Now while this looks great, and I'd be very hopeful for it, it did generate a lot of supports. If you come over here to the bottom of Cura, or the bottom of the um, model, and you lower this bar all the way, you'll see as this print starts, it almost just makes this really weird triangle thing that is barely supported. So this isn't going to have a high chance of surviving. Now I could go in here and add some custom supports. It's a little uh, feature you can find over in the marketplace and that can definitely help you, but it still isn't guaranteed. There really is no good collision area here for the print to start on. What you're really looking for is this dark purple. Now this dark blue, dark purple, this is real good support interface. This is where the print is going to adhere to the support. And if you look over here on this part, there's none. There's nothing going on here that's going to hold that up and it has a higher risk of falling over. Now if you tilt it forward just a little bit, you might be able to play with that support overhang angle without generating too many supports that you really don't need. That's looking a little bit better. So now if we zoom in on that bottom, you can see that the entire um, first start of the print is actually getting some pretty good adhesion here all across the board and it's going to have less, uh, much less risk of falling over. As for the eyes, this is going to work out great. It's going to build up and it's going to catch the print as it starts to print a little bit in midair. You can actually see here, this is exactly how I print my Mark 85 helmet. The support holds the eyes up, it's tilted just a little bit forward and as for that little starting bit, all that's left is a little bit of a raft for better security. Now how easy your supports come off, that's going to vary depending on your temperature filament or your filament temperature and uh, just some of your other settings, but orienting it like this is going to give it a much higher chance of survivability so you really won't have to worry. And this kind of applies to anything with real sharp spikes or points at the bottom of it. They're very hard to print, so being able to orient or cut things apart to get it to print better will always serve you in the long run. A real great example of a problem like this is something like Nova Star. Printing this is just wild. You can lay it face down on its front. It's gonna come out kind of like dookie. You can lay it back more, but you still have the problem with all of these points all around it. That's why I've gone and actually cut the star in half, and now I have two perfectly flat surfaces to print this on. The only time I ever have these stars fail is if I myself have a clog or I didn't level the bed properly. But I print them both out exactly like this at the same time, and they come out pretty good. All you have to do is break them apart, take the raft and support off, and glue them together. This is also always a pretty big point of contention when talking about how much material and print time do you spend on something. And this is going to vary person to person, project to project. Something like this Mark II Iron Man helmet from DO3D, the entire dome and jaw was one solid piece. I myself went right through and cut 
here in Mesh Mixer so I can print the dome upside down with a lot less support needed and then I was able to print the jaw separately and then I'm gonna go and fuse that together. Whereas this Mark III helmet came pre-sliced, almost like that Mark 85 helmet where I didn't have to worry about something like that. Now if you wanna use more supports, if you wanna stand it up and print it perfectly normally, that's totally up to you, but just always consider and weigh your options. Is it better to use more filament right off the bat, take longer print time, or are you okay post-processing it, welding some parts together and doing a little bit more sanding or filling? Totally up to you. This brings us to the next part, the dome. Is it better to print it upside down or stand it up like that and just have the inside full of supports? Let's find out. Now, unfortunately, usually large parts like this won't fit on a smaller Ender 3 build plate. You can play with the orientation, but you are gonna risk some things with that. Um, it might not be a bad idea to cut this into a few pieces, and I talk about that in a few other videos or my original print orientation video, but let's say we're going up to something a little bit bigger, something CR10 size that's really not gonna give you any issues that can print something like this in one whole shot. Now you can stand it up normal. You always wanna to try to find a flat surface if possible. Down here doesn't look too bad. That's something I would definitely keep an eye out for, but you're gonna run the risk of how is all of here gonna be supported. You just have a tiny little support bit that's gonna hold all of this up until it fuses with the rest of the helmet. Now we can go and support block all of this out and I'll show you that on the Nova helmet what I'm talking about, so please stay tuned for that. We're getting there. But something like this, this is gonna be very complicated. It's gonna be four or five different start points. So if you're looking at a very smooth topped helmet like the Mark 85, flipping it upside down and printing it like kind of like a bowl is gonna be much safer. Now as for settings for something like this, these are my standard settings. I'm using roughly anywhere from five to 10% of an infill with a gyroid infill. This material uh, temperature settings, those are based on my printers and those are based on the filament I'm using. These are gonna vary person to person. And speed is also gonna change. Sometimes on my CR10 style printers, I'll print anywhere from a 50 to 100, depending on the orientation and the size of the print. If I'm printing a really long, tall sword prop, I'm not gonna print it as fast as something like a dome helmet that isn't gonna have too much wobble or sway. Now, support generation. You want it for everywhere, and you can flip between normal and tree supports. Always weigh your options on that too. Uh, tree supports are great, but they can very drastically increase slicing time, and they're not always the best thing to use all of the time. Play around with that and you'll start to see what I mean. The big thing is support density. This is a setting you should absolutely enable and from, from the factory, Cura wants it at 20%. That means 20% of your support is gonna be full of plastic. Make that two or 3%. There is no need for that much support. I would stray away from zero because that can cause a little bit of issues, but two to three seems to be the sweet spot. Cura also wants to use 45 degree overhang angle. Now that's gonna use a lot of supports all over the place. Now, while I wouldn't say don't print this, and somewhere you are going to do something like this, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with experimenting and you're gonna learn. Maybe the next time, instead of using a 45 degree overhang, you switch to something like a 50 to a 60. It's all about learning what your printer can handle. I know my printers are fine at a 65 degree overhang angle, and I've printed enough of these helmets to know that I don't need any support here, so I can go and support block that out. Same goes for these little magnet holes and the detail that's sitting right around here. I don't need that, but again, it's gonna print you know, pretty securely and I don't have to worry about anywhere drooping or issues and it's not gonna take that long. It's only 300 grams of filament, really not that bad. If I hover over the eye, I'm gonna see that 14% of the movement and time is dedicated just to supports, so that's really not that awful. Now with a couple support blockers thrown into place, I've cut down almost 70 grams of filament and it's gonna print a little bit quicker. Now I know this looks scary to some people, it just looks like it's teetering on the edge there. Again, work your way up to it. There's no obligation to just go and print something immediately like this. No matter what the Facebook groups say, try and test it out for yourself. Now we've covered upside down helmets, we've covered support blockers. Now what about something like a Nova helmet which can really incorporate both? Now if I was to just drop this on my build plate, run some standard settings and slice it. Let's see how much time it's gonna take. Almost six days and over an entire roll of filament. That's crazy. The amount of supports that this thing is using is just incredible. You can see just how dense this entire center support is. And I can promise you, after having printed a couple Nova helmets like this one, you really, really don't need that much at all. And everything else I'm about to show you can also be applied to Mandalorian helmets as well. Let's go into here and tweak just some very basic settings. Well, I don't need 20% uh, infill. I'm gonna run a 10. Something like print speed, I know on my Pro V2, I can run on something like this, a 70. But the big time saver is gonna come from your support overhang angle, which I like 65, and this support density, 
change it back down to a two or a three. I'll, I'll even do a two for this one. So this is already gonna look a lot better. Now we're down to just over two days and less than half a roll of filament. I think just by tweaking those very standard basic settings, we've gone and saved a ton of time and filament already with basically the same results. You can see here, it looks basically the same, about, about the same amount of supports and you still have that whole center dome part, but I can show you from experience, you really, really don't need it. So let's put the icing on the cake and support block out this entire inside. So you can drop a support blocker anywhere on the model and then go to scale, click the support blocker itself and then scale it up. You can also ununiformly scale it to make it like long um, long rectangles or you know we really weird shapes. It doesn't need to be a giant cube. So let's see what this gets us. Less than two days and just over 300 grams of filament. That's a far cry from the five and almost six days and over a thousand grams of filament. Theoretically, you can now print three to four of these helmets in the same material cost and time it was gonna take you to just print one. Let's look at something like a one piece, you know, face mask or that kind of helmet, something like this red hood helmet. Now I could print it pretty much just like this, block out some of the supports in there, call it a day. But having played around with this helmet just a few times, I know I can stand it up kind of something like that, get the supports to interact more with the eyes, and then take something like a support blocker, throw it up here, scale it up, and make sure you cover up like the, the logos and stuff. Sometimes this can generate some really weird supports. So this one's from do3d.com. And slice. It ends up looking something like this. Really no supports on the inside. And again, you wanna go into the, the first couple layers and really evaluate how that's gonna be built up. I'm getting some really good support right around the edges here. You can see all the purple. So I'm not too worried about that. And right about there, it grabs the front. So from here, we have a really good base and foundation for that mask to build up. And then eventually it gets caught up with the eyes. And while the eyes aren't the most important thing, I have blocked them out before. It just adds that little bit more stability as the helmet builds up even higher to finish. Now, obviously this is a very tall print and it doesn't have the best base. So you are gonna wanna slow the print down a little bit when printing something like this. It's all about how is your bed moving? Is it a bed slinger that moves forward and back? Or is it a core XY or faux core XY like the Ender 5 Plus where the bed just moves down? Obviously that print isn't gonna sway back and forth now and you can print at a much higher speed. Lastly, I wanna talk about probably one of the more complicated helmets people ever try to print something like a Black Panther helmet that just has an abundance of details. I mean, this mask is beautiful. It's a free DO 3D file. Yeah, I said free, so I'll leave a link for this one down below because it's a really cool print and it looks beautiful. Now, aside from maybe having to cut this thing up to fit on a smaller printer, which I really don't recommend because re-welding it's gonna be a nightmare. There's really no good lines to go through. What's the best way to print this? Unfortunately, I've seen people try to print it face down like this because it uses less support. But unfortunately, that's not gonna give you the best results. This is where all of the support is going to be, and it's just not going to come out pretty, unfortunately. You're going to have to break all of the supports out of all those little nooks and crannies, all of the detail. It's just going to be a little rough. And you can see right here, all of this yellow is exactly what it's going to look like. You can see how flat all of this is, these really nice gems and crest detail. It's just going to look like a stair-stepping issue, and that's only if you get the supports off perfectly clean, which typically you probably won't. This helmet was not easy to print. It was a very difficult mask, staying with something like a Star-Lord helmet. I really, really had to eat and burn up some supports here, and I tilted it back as much as possible to give it the best chance of surviving. The less supports that were on the outside of the mask, the better. Even though this is gonna take five days and almost a whole roll of filament, it's probably gonna look a lot better when it comes out. And it's gonna use a lot less supports. Now there are still some in the nose and on the outsides, and you could go through and support block those if you wanted to, but all of the supports are in the back. I did block out a few of those when I printed mine, but it's gonna take you a little bit of time I definitely didn't need as many supports as it is trying to generate here, but you can see how hollow and empty they are. They're not, you're not gonna lose a lot of material on the supports themselves. Though, just putting down the supports is almost half of the print time. So it's a give take situation. On an Iron Man helmet with really not much detail, obviously you can move around and take, make those sacrifices. But when you're looking at something like a Black Panther helmet that you just want to look good, time is gonna be a factor. And that print orientation, it's gonna be a little bit of the opposite of what we've been talking about. But I can tell you from experience, I'm printing this exact helmet. It is more than worth it to up the quality, tilt it back a little bit, and just kind of pull the trigger on it. 
Didn't it look pretty? So guys, I do hope you enjoyed that video. I'm uh, really hoping that it gave you some insight on how I look for uh, print orientation and what I'm paying attention to and just the trials and errors I myself have gone through. You're not gonna get this overnight. That's just not how it works, unfortunately. You will have failures, you will have setbacks, you will have mistakes. And don't be discouraged just because you post a, a picture or an image of something you printed on Facebook and you used a lot of supports or you printed it at a weird angle. Most people are just trying to help when they put in their two cents saying, hey, why don't you try this? Or I printed it like that. It's going to be weird. Take it with a grain of salt. Most people are just trying to help you. And another shout out to all my patrons for giving me cool video ideas like this. If you guys are interested in my Patreon, there's a link for that down below, as well as all of the videos I have referenced or other tutorials I think might help you guys out in your 3D printing journey. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video or you want me to cover more in depth in a future video, please let me know down below. Let me know what helmet maybe might be your favorite in the video or what helmets you want to see me make on the channel. But that's going to be a wrap for now, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.